Welcome back to another episode of Miniature Mashup, everybody. Today we're talking about Bone Devils. No, not those guys. I'm talking about different powerful monsters. In Dungeons & Dragons, a Bone Devil is a diabolical being with some skeleton-like qualities. Kind of like Janice Dickinson. Oh, me. Looking at commercially available miniatures, there's a pretty reasonably priced one from the Reaper Bones. It's only three bucks. But it is size large. The ones we're making today are greater Bone Devils that are at least size huge. Probably getting into the next size category, quite honestly. But aside from that, Reaper Bones... Bone Devil, the price on these miniatures shoots up right away. The collectible pre-paints are about 20 bucks a pop if you can find them in stock. Instead of messing with that headache, let me show you how to make some Bone Devils of your own, using simple supplies that you can get at the dollar store. Uh, to start with, we're going to be using some skeleton garland. That's sort of the core of the Bone Devil miniature. We'll also be using some novelty Halloween bats and some Halloween novelty centipedes. I'm also going to be using some skull beads I've got, but you can certainly use the skulls that come with the skeleton garland. I just found them a little too proportional and round. I like the skull beads I'm using because they've got these jutting caveman jaws. It makes them look a little less human. We're going to start by hacking the wings off of our Halloween novelty bats because we don't need the whole bat. We just need the wings. I'm going to cut it as close to the bat's body as I can using a pair of heavy wire cutters, although you can certainly do this with a razor knife as well. After that, I'm going to take all of these cheap plastic items and I'm going to dip them in some warm water with some detergent in it and scrub them with a toothbrush. And after we've scrubbed them, I'm going to let them soak for about 20 minutes just to make sure we get any kind of releasing agent off of it. I always do that when working with plastics anyway. And it's an especially good idea with you when you're using something that isn't really intended to be painted. After that, we're going to go to our skeleton garland and we're going to start bending it at the knees and ankles. The pose that they come with is very stiff, very upright, and we want them to have a little more action in their pose. Uh, we're also just going to break them down in general, clipping off the legs, clipping off the arms, uh, disconnecting the spine from the the torso and also plucking the heads off now when you take that head off you're gonna see what will become our tail underneath after that we're gonna glue the feet to our bases our bases are just can lids that have been cut with a safety can opener so there's no sharp edges and we're gonna use a little e6000 this is a pretty light model so there's no need to screw them down and in fact it might be a little tough to screw this particular model down because the feet are pretty shallow and the bones and the legs are pretty thin is it possible? Probably. You could probably nail it or screw it if you wanted to, but I think E6000 or some two-part epoxy will cut the mustard. After that, I'm going to glue the pelvis and the spine back on, but I'm going to tilt it backwards instead of upright. You're going to let that rest on something so uh, it'll cure correctly in the right position with a little E6000. Like I said, that spine becomes our scorpion tail on our bone devil now after that we're going to take our skull beads or if you're just using the skull garland just the skull from that and we're going to effectively give it a mohawk with our e6000 just smear that on and then we're going to wrap around it with our halloween novelty centipede what that's going to do is give it a bunch of horns and slash thorns make it look a little less human it's going to be a, a very easy way to sort of break up that human skull and uh, add some horns to it. Now I want to reinforce the knees and I also want to cover up the brakes in the knees. They, they just don't have enough mass for what's supposed to be kind of a living thing. So I take a little paper towel, I rip it in shreds nice and raggedy, dip it in water, and then I smear it with PVA glue. That's, you know, white school glue. And I get that very much into the fibers and then I'm gonna wrap it around the knees, squeeze out the excess water, and make that very tight. That's gonna reinforce the knees, make them a little stronger, and it's also gonna cover them up, add a little mass to them. When it's when it's finished, it looks quite nice. And as you can see, I just sort of lay the paper towel on my hand after it's been wet, and then I rub the PVA glue into it with a finger, and then wrap the whole thing around the knee joint like a bandage, and then squeeze it tight around there so that when it's when it hardens, it's adding a little extra strength to those knees. Not that they are really need it, but it's it's really more about just adding some mass there and not showing us that, that weird break that's in the knee. We want to conceal that. The next step is I take the bat wings we've cut off and I take my Dremel tool 
and I dig, uh, I drill a hole out in the muscle because we're going to be pinning them. These novelty bats tend to be a little on the rubbery side. They're not rubber. I think they're definitely some kind of plastic, but it's not the most model-friendly plastic in the world. And one way to make these wings a lot stronger is by taking a bit of wire, dipping it in E6000, and then sticking it into that hole we just dremeled into the wing. That effectively gives it a metal skeleton. And we can do that for both wings. We will then drill holes coming in from the side into the shoulders of our skeleton garland. And that's where we'll insert the wire, coat the wire with a little E6000. I'm also going to add a little E6000 on the chin and connect it to the torso. I'll also be reinforcing those knees we just reinforced with the paper towel and glue with a little hot glue. You're not really going to be able to see it and better safe than sorry. Add a little strength to the structure. Inside the pelvis, we're going to be placing a wooden bead. I like to use the hold of the bead out forward. That way, uh, it can look like a navel. We don't want that whole navel full size. We're going to cover it up with hot glue a little bit. But that becomes the structure that kind of holds the torso and the pelvis together once the spine is gone. Since we're using the spine as a tail, we've got to have something else connecting it. And uh, obviously, our centipede will look like the spine, but it doesn't actually have strength, so we can't actually use that to connect these pieces. Add a little hot glue to the top of that bead and then we can just sit the torso down on top of it. Uh, reinforce that later with a little hot glue in front of the torso and we've got a strong structure. I also use the hot glue to hide where the wings are connected to the torso because um, there's a little bit of a gap there. We just fill that in with hot glue. Looks pretty good when it's done. Now these hands aren't very scary. They're certainly not enough to be claws and these monsters have claws with damage. So we're gonna cut two of the fingers off and leave three fingers. Those are going to act as a skeleton, and I'm going to build claws out of a two-part epoxy. I don't actually get that on film here. I thought I did. Uh, there's quite a bit I add with epoxy. I make those claws. I also make some spikes that shoot out of the sides of the shoulders, and I add a little to the head as well, to the skull, to make it look a little less human. I just sort of give it a little extra jawbone and a little bit of mass on one side of the head to make it look a little different. Just uh, not quite full-blown skull. I'm trying to make this thing look a little more demonic. My, my goal is to hide the fact that it is just a skeleton with stuff glued to it, and I'd like to uh, dress it up as much as possible. It's a little bit of a construction project, but for Halloween, this is a lot of fun. I enjoy making monsters, and uh, this is one of the spookiest. Now, around the pelvis, I'm going to wrap a little more of our PVA wet paper towel just to give it some mass, just to hide again some of the meteor bits, but uh, also to give it some modesty, maybe. After all, these are living things. They're not actually skeletons, so we'll give it some cover in the privates. After that, we're just going to add a little bit of flocking to the base with, of course, some craft sand, some PVA glue, take it outside, and prime them in gray. This is actually going to be sort of an undercoat, the shadow inside the skeleton, and the first step after that will be to add a base coat of white over the gray. I don't want to get up in the in the shadows. We're going to leave a gray undercoat, but wherever that light's hitting on the outside, we're just going to do a base coat of white. Now, for painting this project, I'm using Catgut Paintings Coconut Crab Tyranid Pattern. I'm not going to go into details about what that is because it isn't mine to tell you about. I'm not going to rip off some other YouTube creator's content just for the sake of uh, filling time on my video. So I put the link for that video in the description below. If you want to pause here and check out the specifics of it, that's not a bad idea. It's a real fun watch. Very, very beautiful pattern. And the reason I chose it, Bone Devils look pretty insectile in the art and I didn't, I wanted to lend some of that to these models and so i'll show you how i did them in stages here but i won't go into specifics here they are guys i think they turned out pretty great considering the cost as you can see they're quite massive when placed up against a 28 millimeter reaper templar knight if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe visit us on facebook you can like you can like the facebook group there you can also I download and look at pictures of these models there. Please consider donating to my GoFundMe campaign. Don't forget to hit that bell. And a special thanks to everybody who has donated in the past. I'll have another video up for you very soon.
Thanks. Bye.